There have been four species of Pacific salmon introduced into the Great Lakes. Chinook, coho, and pink salmon, as well as steelhead or rainbow trout. Up until recently, steelhead were thought to be a member of the trout family, but biologists have decided that they genetically resemble the salmon family more closely. Salmon actually evolved from the steelhead in one of the more recent ice ages. In 1895, steelhead became the first species of Pacific salmon to be introduced to the Great Lakes when they were stocked into the Sauble River in Michigan, which is a tributary to Lake Huron. They continue to be stocked in all five Great Lakes today. Stable populations exist in all Great Lakes and naturally reproducing fish are more present throughout. Steelhead are the only species that spawn more than once. Repeat spawners are more common in the Great Lakes because they don't have to undergo the fresh to salt water transition. There are multiple runs of steelhead into the rivers. Some travel upstream after fall rains. The larger push occurs as soon as the ice on the lake starts melting. Coho salmon were introduced in the 1960s a highly sought after sport fish, both commercially and rec recreationally. Populations are stable throughout the Great Lakes. Mature adult fish typically spawn after three years in the lake. Fish return to the rivers in October and November. Pink salmon, the smallest species of Pacific salmon, were next to be introduced in the 1950s. Pinks are not heavily stocked, but self-sustaining populations are established, especially in Lake Huron and Superior. All pinks reach maturity at two years old. Adult fish return to the rivers in mid-August or September, where the spawning soon occurs. Chinooks are the largest species of salmon, averaging 15 to 20 pounds, but can top 100 pounds in the Pacific Ocean. They are not particularly popular commercially, but they are the most desired as a recreational game fish. Mature adults typically spawn at five years old. Runs begin in August and run right th through until October in the Great Lakes. However, on the West Coast, runs can start as early as April. Chinook spawn on large shallow sections of the river on large gravel. When it comes to the different species of Pacific salmon, they differ greatly. Some spend hardly any time in natal streams, others spend years. Some mature at two years old, others as late as five. Some live for two years, others for ten. Some can spawn more than once, and others die after the first time spawning. All species of Pacific salmon are potamodromous, which means they are born in freshwater, migrate to the Great Lakes, which are essentially freshwater oceans, and then return to the same rivers to spawn and die. If these mature adult fish are lucky enough to evade the countless obstacles that they face throughout their life, males and females return to the headwaters of the rivers to court and ultimately breed. The female lays on her side and vigorously beats her tail to dig a shallow depression in the bottom of the river. Then a female and a male fish will pair up and they will deposit eggs and melt into the red at precisely the exact same time. After these eggs are deposited, the female will go directly upstream of the red and begin digging again, which displaces the gravel and covers the eggs. After spawning, the adult salmon die. They either decay or are eaten by other species. In this way, they continue to nourish the environment around them. Some of the eggs will be successfully fertilized. Inside the egg is an embryo and a yolk which feeds it. For a while, the embryo has enough oxygen inside the egg. As it grows, it needs more. When the oxygen inside the egg is depleted, it struggles to break free from its eggshell. Once it has discarded the eggshell, it is an alvine. The yolk sac contains sufficient nutrition for their early development. 
They, remem they remain under the gravel for protection against predators until their yolk sac is fully absorbed. Once baby salmon have used all the nutrition from their yolk sac, they struggle free from the gravel and become fry. Fry spend most of their time avoiding predators in the deep dark pools of the river. They dart out from under logs and such at any organic material that floats down the river. Once they feel the urge to, they will start their migration back down towards the Great Lakes. Once on their way, they will begin smolting. Smolting is a transition that fry go through when leaving river systems. They develop a silvery coating over their scales to help camouflage them from predators in the big lake. The process of smolting is the only thing that genetically differentiates steelhead from rainbow trout. Rainbow trout only have one life phase. Each salmon stock genetically adapts to the environment in which it resides and exhibits unique characteristics such as migration routes, migration timing, and productivity. In order to navigate the stronger, faster, more violent flows of the northern coast, Lake Superior salmon have adapted to be more sleek and muscular than their cousins from other Great Lakes, such as Huron, where they are much huskier. Another reason for the smaller proportions of superior fish is because of the low productivity of the lake. Coho salmon in Lake Superior have adapted to feed almost entirely on plankton, which restricts their size greatly compared to other lakes. There are a number of reasons why salmon were introduced into the Great Lake. They needed to replace lake trout as a top predator in the ecosystem after lake trout populations were battered by sea lamprey and alewives. The salmon fed heavily on alewives, reducing their population quickly. Another reason was to create a recreational fishing industry within the Great Lake. To date, recreational fishing has generated up to eight billion dollars, the majority of which has been through salmon. In recent years, catches that have been reported have made up as much as 80% of the total catch. As you see, the salmon is a species which greatly impacts lotic and lentic systems. This species also has a very large impact on our economy. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Long live the salmon.